Big Questions with the Dead Milkman. The big question that I have for you fellows this week is, <clears throat> what is your favorite thing to cut? And by cut, you know, you could cut class. You can cut uh, someone out of a team or whatever. So, um, I had a tough. I had a. I had a problem choosing my favorite. Um, I, I'll give you a, a couple before I tell you my favorite. <clears throat> um, I like cutting bell peppers. Um, I don't know why. I like just. I don't know. I just really like cutting them. Um, I like cutting cloth where there's like a resistance, like. Um, and when I was doing, uh, like working for a general contractor, I got into cutting tiles with a diamond saw. It was awesome. It was really cool. It was a little scary at first, but after a while, it was like, it was cool. Um, uh, but my favorite thing to cut is hair. I just really like the feeling of cutting hair. Um, it's, a, it's just very satisfying to me. Especially when it's not mine, because if I make a mistake, I'll be like, hey, you ask someone who's not a professional to cut your hair. So, Oh, hair. I thought you said cutting share, as in like, I believe in love. I believe in. I was like, why would you? She you seems believe to believe in love after life. <laughs> <laughs> Whose hair have you been cutting? Oh, anybody who asks. <laughs> I, my wife, other girlfriends in the past. Um, my kids, um, my own, but scissors or times, scissors or clippers. Or well, both. a lot of times I use the the clippers, but if I don't want to cut it all the way down, I'll just grab chunks of hair and just start cutting, and then I'll look in the back, and without fail, and I'm not trying to brag, but without fail, people are like, "Oh, your hair looks nice. Who cut your hair?" And I'll be like, "I did," and they're like, "Really?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I've been doing it since I was 15." So. No hairstylist has ever, I mean, this is fine, but you guys all know the craziness that it gets to. And no stylist or hairdresser or anybody has been able to make it look uh, anything like I would want it to. They always accentuate the curls. And I'm like, can you not do that? So, so, so yeah, that's a, uh, uh, I, I, I think I had, I don't know, I, didn't, I never looked this up, but I may have had some kind of disorder as a youth because I went on like a cutting spree when I was probably six or seven. Um, I can't believe I'm telling you. I've never, I've never told anyone about this, but my parents knew and my brother and sister because I was cutting their shit up. <laughs> my sister was like, you cut my shin pads for soccer practice. And I was like, I don't know. And my, I'm, I cut the curtains in the bathroom window, like, I guess I thought they needed to be shorter. I just, I don't know. I like that feeling of just like <sighs> cutting. With scissors? With scissors. Or knives. Oh. I like knives too. The cops are going to see this and they're going to pull up the floorboards in your house. They're going to be like. <laughs> you know, guns don't have that personal touch. That <laughs> I like black knives so much. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's my. That was my, my favorite is hair. I like, I, I, there's more that I could list, but we'd be here for a while. That's it. I like to cut time. Mm. Um, well, there's cutting, cut time is, is kind of, is a musical term. I think it's when you play a written measure uh, twice as fast as the time signature. It's called, I think that's called cut time. But um, what I'm thinking of is like when I do recording at home and I make songs and I, I start out with a much longer piece of music than what the final song becomes. I like the process of cutting things down and simplifying and making things more economical. Quite often I'll, um, like for instance, I'm working on something right now that's about six and a half minutes long. And I know it's too long, but I have an ending that I like, and I have a beginning that I like, and I have different sections of the song in the middle. And I know that I, when I'm ready to decide what the final song is going to be, I know that I can take out at least probably up to two minutes of the song. So I like the process of editing um, or 
cutting out pieces of the song that I think can go away and make it a better song, more economical. Yep. So uh, cut time. I think cut time actually means they would write out stuff for people in six, eight time. They kind of didn't get that. So instead of one bar of six, eight time, it'd be two bars of three, four time, because that was even, you can see it in the, in the four, you know, a sort of standard thing they would sort of get, but that is the same thing, I guess. So uh, mine's not very original. And I'm sure everyone said it before. I like to cut cocaine. <laughs> um, now, that's a little callback for the five or six of you who may have watched the show last week. And it wasn't many more than that. <laughs> um, all right. For the two or three of you who are going to watch this week, um, actually, my favorite thing to cut is very close to what Dean said. I like to cut uh, stuff out of tracks when I'm recording and on dolls and when I mix. I love the um, what's called the slice tool. It looks a little bit like this. And when I get it, I go in there and go, I'm going to cut you, track. I'm going to cut you, man. I'm going to cut you. You're going to bleed. And I do that because when I do that, I know I'm doing my job. Basically, I'm, I'm creating dynamics. If I pull something out, uh, then, you know, it, it, it's rather than everything going at once, not great on the ear, but if something drops out and comes, it will come back. Um, it, it creates a nice movement and a nice. Now, for you young people who are interested in producing, this is going to be a very difficult thing for you to do up front. If you take a band and you say, okay, I need you just to lay out for a couple of bars, you might as well say, hey, bring me your pets. I'm going to sacrifice them to Baal because musicians do not like to do this. They'll make some sort of noise. They're like, well, I've got this scratchy part. No, don't do that, okay? So what you do, just record them all, and when you go in, just cut some stuff out. I know you're hired to produce, and they might complain and say, hey, where's my part on this? But it really it really does make stuff sound a lot better. You know, they'll be like, how about if I play kazoo in there? And no, I mean, let's face it. If you look at Punk Rock Girl, there's a thing uh, it written out musically. There's a thing that says Rodney, and it's one giant rest. It's just really, and I stuck with that. So yeah, I like to get in there. I like to get the uh, the um, slice tool. I like to take stuff out, move it around, and I always know, like like my my favorite saying of all time: uh, you, a track isn't done when there's nothing more to add. It's done when there's nothing more to remove. And just taking stuff out moves it along. And, and that's that's how I know what I'm doing. I'm having a beer now. Let's talk with Joe. I like to cut long pauses of silence out of video. It saves <laughs> the watcher, or the viewer, some time. Maybe it's a little second here, a little second there, but all adds up <laughs> over the course of a life of watching video. But even more than that, I like to cut a demo. And cutting a demo is an old fashioned term that people still use today. I could say I like to record a demo, but for the sake of this particular episode, I decided to say cut a demo. Uh, and it, it refers to the days when, before tape machines, when people, publishers had little recording studios in them where they'd have a lathe, an actual cutting lathe and they cut um, directly onto a disc a song and a dem make demonstration disc. And that's where demo comes from, a demonstration disc of a song which you guys probably already know, but people still say, cut a demo. And I like to cut a demo because it's like the culmination of having written the song and it's done. At least it's done in demo form. It could change after that, but that's why I like it. And make your demos be demos. Don't try to turn your demo into the finished song. There's demo, well, finished song. Yes. It's true because there's the tyranny of the demo. If you get a producer that insist on you playing the solo just like it is in the demo can be very frustrating mm -hmm. because that's why i say just sit the solo out just sit it out Don't sit it out i'll put something else in there i'll put something else in there i'll put i'll put a sample in there trust me you'll like it just just sit out for a few goddamn bars Sorry. i also find a lot of <laughs> pleasure in cutting swiss cheese for some reason i think swiss cheese is a very fun thing to cut because of the holes the holes and I don't know it just has a it just has the right amount of resistance to the knife and I know it's going to taste good in a nice thick little block on top of a cracker or mozzarella is nice too bread. mozzarella gives like you a little resistance with no <laughs> I like cutting an X in my forehead because you know Charlie's God and Charlie talks to me a lot and you know at times it gets out of jail and the music's gone boom 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 and, and Charlie sure he's short but he only kills when he eats man 
All right. Should we move on to recommendations? Yes, please move on to recommendations. I'm going to recommend something I may have recommended already, but I don't remember. Um, it's something I've seen several times, or I guess listened to several times. It's also in written form, but it's a commencement speech by um, David Foster Wallace at the Kenyon College in 2005, I think. And it's called This Is Water. Um, and I encourage you guys to watch it. It's not, it's, it's on YouTube, but it would, it's just his voice. Um, they don't have an actual video of it for some reason. Um, but it's just real, I'm not even gonna say anything about it. It's just very, um, I don't know, every, every time I listen to it, I get something else out of it. Um, so yeah, check that out. We'll leave a, a link to that in the comment or in the description. That's all I recommend today. All right. Um, well, like last week, um, because um, inundated in with home improvement right now, I'm going to recommend a ratchet screwdriver. Now, this particular one I like. It's not made anymore, unfortunately, um, but it has a little pop-up thing in the top here. And you have the different bits that you can pull out. And then they, they stick in the end here and it's magnetic. But then it's also, can you hear that clicking? So you can set it so it can be tightened or if you need to unscrew it, you can turn it the other way. But it also has this special little thing right here. If I push this down, you can actually make it longer. Whoa. Um, unfortunately, they don't make this one anymore. It's by skill. If you could find one, I think you might be able to find them on eBay, but they're very expensive now for some reason. But you can find ratchet screwdrivers in any hardware store or whatever. Um, it just makes putting things together and taking them apart all that much easier. So get yourself a nice ratchet screwdriver. Uh, recently, I went on vacation, which is rare for me. Um, and uh, while I was on vacation, I got around to reading this book, Good Omens, which I've been meaning to read for like 30 years. Uh, people tell me how great it is. And uh, um, I read the whole book in like two nights and a day when Vienna slept in late. So I, I mean, I really, 100 pages in, I realized this was going to be one of my favorite books of all time. Of course, it helps that we uh, vacation in an allegedly haunted house. And even if you know for a fact ghosts are bullshit, any noise will have you up in the middle of the night and like, you know, I think I'm just going to read for a little while. But the, the thing I wanted to talk about, not so much the book, is over here it says, soon to be a TV series. And I thought, please don't do that. That that never works out. Please don't. And so um, I was home, uh, I think it was like a weekend or two ago, and uh, um, I, I, have, I saw it was on Amazon Prime. I saw they have uh, Good Omens. And I thought, you know what? I'll give it a try. And I watched it. It's six episodes in about two nights and an afternoon. It was that freaking good. It's uh, Michael Sheen and uh, David Tennant. David Tennant, who was Doctor Who, uh, they play Aziraphale and uh, Crowley. And normally I tell people, read the book first. Don't, don't see the TV show, because when you see a TV show or a movie, you imagine those people in the book. But you are fine, people, if you read the book first, to go ahead and imagine Michael Sheen and uh, David Tennant as the characters, because they are brilliant in it. They're so good uh, that Michael Sheen, uh, after he finished his last scene, he went out and cried. That's like how, how committed he was. This thing is lovingly made. It's fantastic. I was real. I thought I was going to hate it. I was really, really happy with it. What's that I hear? Is that somebody going, oh, dude, I don't even own a TV. <laughs> All right, much, much applause for you, dude. Um, now let me tell you about my vegetarian co-op. All right, good, fine. But the, uh, um, the thing is that um, the person also in this is Michael McKean who we all know from Lenny and the Squig Tones. So this is our second Lenny and the Squig Tones mentioned. So, so much love to Michael McKean. Now, the other thing I want to recommend is a channel for a guy named Nick DiRamio. And what Nick does is he um, picks apart Lifetime movies, uh, Disney films. There's, it turns out there was a lot of queer coding in 19, uh, late 1990s, early 2000s Disney films. Uh, and uh, he's not one of those people going, oh, look at this terrible stuff. He's like, yay, queer coding. Um, it's really cool. Uh, he's really funny. He's given me um, two of my favorite insults. The first is, Looks like somebody powdered your face with Tang. Congratulations, sweetheart. You're the queen of the space station. <laughs> and and my the best quote of all time, which is, 
just because you didn't go to college doesn't mean you're still in high school. So he's really great. He turned me on to Pure Flix. You guys know what Pure Flix is? It's the Christian Netflix. And it doesn't have anything that wasn't in the Bible, which means it doesn't have good lighting, decent scripts, um, decent makeup. It is really, he's really, really funny. So yeah, if, if you check him out, if you're down, just put him on in the background and he will say something that'll make you so, I laugh so hard at this stuff. Sometimes I have to go back and run it through just to catch the stuff I missed when I was laughing. So uh, Nick DiRamio, uh, De yeah, uh, I'll put, we'll put up the links and be sure to check him out. I'd like to recommend a documentary that came out in the beginning of the year 2020 uh, called A Thousand Cuts. It made its debut at Sundance. It underscores the importance of a free press for, for democracies. Uh, uh, um, it focuses on a journalist from the Philippines named Maria Rasa. Do you know about her? Uh, she's helped found the, the, wet, the online news site Rappler.com, which is a victim of uh, um, orchestrated attacks by disinformation networks, including Facebook in the Philippines. And um, basic, basically for exposing the regime, the pre uh, President Duterte's uh, war on drugs uh, and the slayings of like thousands and thousands of people, mostly poor people. And it's an interesting documentary to, to, to watch. It was, it, it made, I think it made its debut on television here on PBS, but it's available on the PBS streaming platform and on their website. And it might seem like a downer, but it's actually pretty interesting. And she says a lot of important things about uh, journalism and and how author authoritarian governments uh, take control or erode democracies from within. Stuff that could happen not just in the Philippines, but here in the United States as well. It's called A Thousand Cuts. Appropriate. And it's Tune in next week for you ever go to lick an envelope and get a paper cut on your tongue. <laughs> I'd also like to recommend, if I may, a second thing. It's a little more upbeat, although it's not really upbeat. It's an album. It's a very beautiful album by uh, a band called Beautiful Junkyards from Lisbon, Portugal, a mixed gender band. And it's very ethereal. Uh, they mix synthesizer with acoustic instruments like guitar and cello, male and female vocals, with lyrics in both Portuguese and English. It's very layered. Um, and they, they, ha they have an al album that came out this January 2021, and it's called Cosmorama. And I've been listening to it a lot, especially in my car. And has some of the slowest songs I've heard in like this century, but it makes me, it's, it's not all gloomy. It's kind of gloomy, but kind of, I don't know, cheerful at the same time. It's weird. It's hard for me to explain, but it makes me feel like I'm floating down the highway when I'm listening to it. Bye. Hey guys, thanks Bye. for your Bye. cuts. Let's cut it. Cut it.